Live from the Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, welcome to the AccuStats One Pocket Invitational. We're coming to you from the Simonis Arena, and we have great action for you tonight. We have two matches coming up, one now and one at 9.30. We've got six of the best players in the world. They were all chosen by you, our loyal and knowledgeable AccuStats fans, and we really appreciate all you've done once again to help make this happen. All right, let's get right underway. This will be match number seven. Our first player with a record of one win and one loss. He's from Trinity, Florida. He's a former Billiards Digest Player of the Year. He's a former U.S. Open nine ball champion, and he's the reigning and defending Derby City one pocket champion. Sponsored by OBQs. He's the Prince of Pool. Please welcome Corey Duell. Thank you very much. And his opponent, our only undefeated player with a record of two wins and no losses. He's from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This gentleman's a two-time Derby City one-pocket champion. He's the reigning and defending U.S. Open one-pocket champion. And just last weekend, he won his fourth uh, Super Billiards Expo Diamond 10 Ball Championship four times in the last six years. He's sponsored by QTech. It's the South Dakota kid. It's Shane Van Boning. Your referee in charge of this match is Carswell Ransom, and we're going to go ahead and send it over to the booth to the voice of AccuStats, Billy Incardona. Bill Incardona here, along with Kenny Schumann. Jenny, Kenny Schumann is obviously one of the premier, if not the premier, tournament directors we have in the game. And shortly he'll join me in the booth to bring to you this great match coming up between Van Boeing and Corey Duell. Uh, let's, I'll bring you up to date a little bit. This will be uh, Van Boeing's third match. He has a record of 2-0. Oh. Corey Duell has a record of 1-1. One one. This is a must-win for Duell if he expects to win the tournament. On the other hand, uh, Shane Van Boeing, he has a little breathing room, but yet he hates to lose. He doesn't want to lose, and he doesn't so show us that, that he's going to be losing anytime soon. Uh, unless he plays Alex Pagaline, and then we're going to have something real special. But anyways... Um, great break for opening up first game. Hello, Kenny. Hi, Bill. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait for this match. Yeah. I like this the is way a... we're performing out there as great as usual. Oh, we'll come out right now. Hey, thanks for the pizza this afternoon. That was good, wasn't oh, it? Man, wasn't that my, good? Look, look at, look, I'm, I'm so oh. pizza out. <laughs> anyway, um... Let's see, uh, Shane got one right near his hole there on the break, didn't he? Yeah. Now, Corey can either kick at the long rail or he can go to the short rail and then play the carom off the six ball, sending the cue ball toward the red three. He can do that, but if he does that, still, uh, Shane looks like he'll kick into the stack, and that 13 looks pretty close. You like the ticky here, or? Oh, okay. I don't know. Well, he I don't sold know. It. I don't. I don't. You know. I guess that he he liked that shot because he figured that he could probably uh, get rid could. of that three ball at, at a later time. But I think he should have done it then. But maybe the uh, the ball that he the hit. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't agree what he did. But of course, uh, you know, he has uh, a different perspective on how, how to play. He's a little unconventional. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shane's looking at the three, the seven, eight, ten, and uh, it looks like it's a little low. But as long as he can stick the cue ball, he'll be fine. Yeah, that's the main point. Of the right shot. The he seven. didn't do that. And he allowed Corey at the table to see the six ball, very makeable shot. The only problem I can see with the shot is that well, he can reach it. I was saying that he can't reach it, but uh, no, he's going to need the bridge, Billy. But it looks like he's going to graze the five and go with the eleven, and then he'd have the five next, and he's got you know four or five balls there to work off of. Oh, if you're correct, and he does graze the five, that'll that'll be just ideal. But I don't know if he'll graze the five. I think it's too heavy on the five. Yeah, I think it may be a little bit, but maybe you're right. My arms aren't. Maybe hard he to plays raise. the six to the thick side of the pocket, <laughs> like he did the other. Yeah, day. right, right. It? That's right. Yeah. yeah. That cost him. Well, that's even better. Okay, now he still has to get on to the next ball, and he has an angle that suggests to me that he's, it's going to be too steep to come back for the 11. How about going at the 15 ball with the cue ball, Billy? And then he'd have the 10. He 
Yeah, I, yeah, he can go go that route, and maybe he no, can right, hit the right, uh, third right, team ball. Yeah, yeah right at yeah. his hand, right at his bridge hand. Oh, oh the ten was good. That's even yeah. better. Now this is the shot right here. Now if he can come up and hit that seven, hit the seven he'll, between he'll the in, eight, he'll be in business. Yeah, just yeah. This is a this is the shot of the rack for dual rug coming up right now. He can pocket the eleven and go straight up table and hit that seven to the left of the eight where he's aiming right now. Right. That'll open up the seven and the fourteen. He'll have a shot on the fourteen, and from there, you know, he may be clear sailing. And let's let's take a look at this shot. Let's see how well he does. Perfect. I think he did pretty well. I thought that That's was even better. Than perfectly hit. executed yes. shot. Now you may need the bridge here again because uh, it looks like it's just maybe at the at the tip of his reach, and he's got to kind of put a stroke on this one. You like drawing at the ten? No, he can't draw. He can't the draw to the ten. He's, got, then he's, gonna he's come. too thin. Yeah, well, no, not that he's too thin. It's just that, uh, you know, if he hits the, tip, the bottom well, part I mean, of the he's, ten, he's coming. He's going to hit the ten on the thin side instead of in the full in the face. I like coming around the two. Maybe he hits the two or something. He goes around the table. He's trying to make the three and move some balls. So if he would have made the three. Then he could have hit the two into some balls and moved a few on his side, and which would have made the made uh, this solution to getting rid of all those balls on the side of the table a little bit easier. If he if he could do this, if he could make the three and freeze the cue ball to the bottom of the two, then uh, he'll maybe force uh, Shane into taking an intentional scratch and maybe going up table. Is he you thinking know? of somehow wedging the cue ball in there and not making the three? I think he's no, got to make, no, he's gotta no, make the three, no, right, no, Billy? No, no, he's got to make the three. Yeah, okay. And uh, uh, the best shot for him at this point would be to make the three and put the cue ball on the, the two. Yep. If he could freeze the cue ball to the bottom of the two, it's like that. Perfect. That's perfect, yeah. That's good. See, now... Uh, he might have left them a little gap, and if he did, I think Shane can spin this down the table, Billy. He, that's why it was so important for him to lock up uh, dead on the two and take this away. Right. He, he he froze on the two too far to the right. Exactly. And he allowed them that clear path down the table. Had he been on the two underneath it or he couldn't have done that, then uh, I think he would have ended up taking the scratch or something. Okay, here's Corey's shot. Uh, watch the cue ball between the seven and the eight to open him up and get a shot on the seven. Nicely executed shot again. Okay, he would like to cross the 14, but in doing that, this corner pocket is awfully large. The cue ball is going to go track, is going to be tracking straight toward this corner pocket. So he's going to probably have to look elsewhere, unless you hit the 14 just full in yeah, the face. Yeah, and not, not be too concerned to get it too far on your side. If you can hit the 14 full in the face and follow through the ball and hit, the, hit right before the pocket with the cue ball, that'll work. But that's a very dangerous shot. Pocket's huge. Now let's see how well he does with this shot. He could scratch with this shot. Let's take a look at it. I think he's cutting it in and going for the one ball. Well, he's doing what you suggested, yeah. Billy, but he just played it so very cautiously, yeah, knowing did. that this way he couldn't get too hurt rather than get risky and trying to get a better position with the cue ball. Now the best place for the cue ball would be somewhere between the chalk on the upper rail and the pocket. Now, if he can position the cue ball on that rail by the chalk, he's going to walk around the table, and he should take a look where he wants to position the cue ball, which he didn't. Unless he sees the 10 ball, maybe he wants to bank the 10 or, or the 8 or something. I don't know. See, I wouldn't go for a ball here. I would play all cue ball. I think ball. he's playing all cue ball, two or three rails, Bill. I, I wouldn't go for a ball here. I would play all cue ball. You know, I don't think I would have done that. I think he got a little fortunate to have... Uh, you know, he Not was, he was out here. He was one going. ball came out and, and blocked the 13. Go ahead. No, he was going in the general direction of, with the cue ball that you had originally suggested, but he, his path was a little bit difficult. I didn't, I didn't mean that, the chalk on the right rail. No, I no, the I chalk know. on the left rail. Yeah. On, the, on, the, oh. on the long rail, way down there. See, I want, to, I want to put him parallel to the pocket. I see. Okay. And I don't know what Corey has here. He's going to be, uh, if he's going to come off the pink, I don't know what he has here. I don't like the pink. Unless he can. Well, no, what I'm saying is, here, here's what I'm saying when I say if he can come off the pink. Me and overhead. I'm, he's up here. Up here. 
If he can come off the pick, the cue ball this truck. way, the 10 goes this way, and the cue ball comes over here and comes over here somewhere. You know, that'll work at right now, but of course, he's got a lot of work to do. I didn't see what he did there. Maybe, I'm sorry, maybe we can go back to that shot. I didn't see what he did there, but of course. Well, he didn't go off the four, the four in the pink, uh, the pink and the 14. No. Uh, see, from, from our 10. vantage point, it's very difficult to us to see what's available for him. Yeah. You know, you have to be down table and take a real good look at what he's looking at. Now, the only thing uh, Shane can do is follow through the eight ball and try to end up. Right back at the 10 in, in, in direct line for the pocket. The pocket where he's standing. Right. Yeah. And by moving the eight ball, he opens up the kick for the two. But let's see how well he does with this. And he two rolls the eight onto his side as well near the side pocket. And now he's going to leave him a, so a soft kick on the two here. If, you know, that's, that's some out. He doesn't have any. Now the eight tied up to nine. So the eight and nine are tied up. Now, this is not an easy kick if he opts to go ahead and kick at the two because if he hits the right side of the two the way we are, we're looking at the table, he can go around the 13. And if he hits too much of the two, he may end up fouling on this shot because he probably won't get a ball to a rail. All right, this is Corey's prior, prior safety here. We okay. came right through the gap there. Yeah, that was a great shot. See, we, we couldn't have possibly seen that shot. Okay, now, if at all possible, what Corey could do here, he could bank the 10 cross-side, okay? He could bank the 10 cross-side, sending the cue ball down and back up table. See? Yeah, Once the cue ball goes back up table in front of that pocket over there, Shane has no shot, no shot, okay? He's got to play good speed with the 10 ball cross-side. He don't want to make it but he wants to play it across the side and reposition the cue ball he fouled right, right where he's standing. Billy, he, took, he fouled. He had a shot clock violation. He failed to take his extension. Well, that's about where he needed to be anyway. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe he didn't get well. Yeah, but now the now ball's going on the spot. Right. And if it passes... It, it does pass. He has a, yeah. he has a pocket. Yeah. But, but do you see the shot I was talking I about? I absolutely see the shot. It, it just would have been a question of speed, the shot you suggested. Yeah. And he's going to get on the two nicely. Oh, uh, yep, he is. He is. You can draw into the 12 now, Billy. Yeah, you want to maybe, maybe draw and have the 12 uh, hit the 15 and open up the 8-1. Can you put that kind I of like stroke for, on uh, it? Here's what I like. I like for him to draw him back and, hit and hitting this ball right here. And just instead grazing of, it. Of, if he draws back at this ball, he might end up over here. Yeah, that, but he's, he still have a shot, though. See, he, he was drawing more toward yeah, that ball. Yeah, yes, he was. Going to the eight? Going to the two, yeah, or whatever. That's, I thought it was Danny Dean Liberto. He's going to the two. <laughs> <laughs> the black two? Yeah, he's going to the two. If he doesn't have the angle that he likes on the one to break loose at 15, then he'll shoot the eight. How many balls does he have here? Corey has three balls. Three, six, that nine, means Shane ten. has four. I, actually, Shane has, yeah, he has four. This will be five. I think he can pinch this and hold it, Billy. Mm. Oh, he really don't like it too much. You know what, that combination, that combination looks pretty good. He may be a better after shooting that combination now because he's in good line for it and he can draw back for the one. Or he can he, draw for the nine. Or if he doesn't it have looks it, like It looks it like he's, yeah, he's going to have to play a bank next. Stop maybe and play a bank. I think he's going to play for the combination. I think so? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now he'll follow this. Dude. Right, because he'll control the 15, and he'll, yeah. have, the, he'll have that. That should yeah, float to the, to the short rail. I think how he's going to play this, he's going to hit. He's got that beautiful soft draw stroke. I think that's how he's going to play this. He's not going to want to go down to the, to, the, to, the long, to the short rail. He's going to draw it softly. Like that. He's got that nice soft draw, so he gets really good action with his soft draw. I've seen him shoot that shot a number of times with great success. He's really this is game mastered that particular shot. 
First and, game? Uh, yeah, and uh, it went in. Game number one goes to Shane Van Boning, who takes the early lead in the match. One to nothing, race to three. Yeah, he's, he's uh, a massive two, two to zero record in, in this uh, tournament. He's actually the leader of the tournament. He's the only undefeated player, Billy, and if he wins here and goes three and oh, he's almost guaranteed no worse than a playoff. I mean, if someone else could still get four, right. go four and one, but um, it's it's not going to be easy with this with this caliber of a, I think of a that round robin. What, what I think is going to happen is this: I think that there are going to be two players tied at four and one, and you know how that has to go, right? Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. It has to go. with Paggy Line must win all his remaining matches and defeat Van Van Boeing in the process, and then they'll both have records, providing that Shane wins his last remaining match. Yeah. Yeah, there's still a, still a lot of possibilities. But there are, but that's that's the, that's the, the consensus. Yeah, that, that I figure it's going to happen. Okay. Now you know, the spoilers are, the spoilers are, Shannon Dalton, who is playing really well, spunky player, man. You know, he's got a lot of heart, a lot of determination, and he could upset anyone. Okay, Corey Dool, very spectacular player. With his creativity, you know, he's liable to do anything and steal a match. Mm -hmm. right. Scott, Scott, Scott's a brilliant player, but he hasn't been playing well, you know. And it, it's really a shame because I love it when he plays well. He's such a great player. But he hasn't been able to feel this 5 by 10 table. That's exactly what his problem's been. He's been struggling with, with, with getting a feel for the bigger table and the speed. Efren Reyes... Well, what more can we say about Efren? You can't call him a spoiler, though, Billy. <laughs> you can't call Efren a spoiler. I don't care if he's 80 years old. Right. And, <laughs> and he's, his record is one and one And he played to Alex Pagaline, as you saw today. Really didn't make any mistakes. One game, I think The first scratched. game, he made a mistake with a no. six to nothing lead in ball count, and it was pretty much all Alex after yeah, that. Yeah, Alex took co total control of that match with his superior play. I mean, he really controlled the table with his play. That uh, eight ball run in the second game by Alex when he actually needed nine, but he ran eight before he missed. That was beautifully done. Anyway, uh, Shane here looking to maybe try to get up underneath the three. He called for an extension. And uh, each player gets one extension per game. And the extension time is the same as the shot clock, which is 60 seconds. And you'll see Carl... You know, what wouldn't be a bad shot if he just rolled softly on the two? If you just roll softly on the two, I think you'll get away with, with that shot. Real, on the very two. soft. Oh, no, excuse me, on the one. I on mean, the one, yeah. yeah. Just roll softly on the one. That way you don't really leave anything. You, know, you may have left the cross bank on the, uh, on the 12 ball, and the cue ball goes into the five. Now, that shot is a good shot for, for Duel. I look for him to play some sort of a shot like that. That's more like in his repertoire. He'll bank the 12 ball toward the three. The cue ball will then go into the five and maybe into the stack. Yeah, but, you know, if he misses the bank and let's say he hits the eight ball by mistake. Uh, well, you, you put a little more English on it to well, make sure I, you I understand that, five. but I think he's going to send this two rails at the three if it'll, if it'll get there. Oh, he saw oh, he a, dead had one. a dead one. He saw a dead one. The only problem with that shot is, is, is all the balls are ended up on this side. <laughs> okay. Well, he's got the one ball, Billy, and if he's got the angle, he can certainly come down towards the five and, you know, five, nine, 14, the pink. Uh, it all depends on the angle he has. And uh, it does look like he's got the proper angle. Oh, the problem here is the one ball. Well, of course. This is a five by ten. This is not an easy shot. A lot of balls on Van Boeing's side. Missed it badly. That was the problem, the one ball. Whenever you have a shot that carries the distance, the one ball did. And with the cue ball positioned fairly closely to that rail, and with all those open balls looking at you the favor Van Boeing's pocket, that shot becomes much more difficult. Yeah, there's a, almost a fear factor. And I don't really think there's enough to be said about the pressure that you know that brings to you you know with, with all those balls just right there and the best player or arguably one of the best players in the world as your opponent you can't really afford to hit that off you know and uh tough shot 
All right, he's off and running, Billy. Do you think he's going to risk drawing into the 14 here and going next for the 9, or is he going to come forward and try to do something with this little cluster? Well, if the 2 passes, I think he's going to play position for the 2, because if he ends up, ends up on the right on, side on of the, the 2... On, yeah, on, with a back cut, then, then he, he can come he, over. Yeah, go toward. He can go toward either the 3 or even go into the 5, uh, the ball on top of the 14. Yeah, I think that's the, uh, that's the pink, but yeah, exactly. Several different ways to go about this. Let's see how he chooses. See, going this way, it's more natural. And right now, he doesn't want to lose this. Oh, he's going to go right into the ball. That was a, that was really nice. But now he's ended up really on top of this ball. He can't, he can't reach it. Man, I was going to say, this is going to be a very difficult shot for him to reach. He's going to need a bridge, and he's going to have to get the, the, cue, the cue stick out of the way in a hurry. Now, if I were he, I would have zero chance of making this ball. Zero. And let's see how well he does. I, I, I wouldn't I, shoot this. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, a, a lot can go wrong. I mean, you, don't, you don't need to have another shot after this, too. Is he going at the one? Wow, he, yeah. he hit that shot really nicely. He didn't really, he didn't get the, uh, the results, obviously, that he wanted, but he really hit that shot well. For the amount of cue ball that he could contact, I agree with you. Is he trying to go behind a nine here? That way. Yes, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to go behind the nine. You know what? He did it. <laughs> he went behind the nine. Yeah, that shot was a big shot. Now the two balls in front of Corey's pocket, the nine and the one, now become neutralized because he was able to get the, uh, the cue ball where he did. Billy, can you see whether or not that 13-2 can be made in the pocket here? Is there enough space I between the two balls? I think, well, there's there's a, probably a quarter of an inch at least between the two balls, which makes that shot can he, can, play can a little throw more it? difficult. No, it plays can't a little throw it. It's too, too far it. away. Yeah, you'd have to be near where the 8 is, but now he just decided to... Well, that's why the position was neutralized, He's, I mean, yeah. those two balls, because... Uh, <laughs> Van, well, the Van Boeing shot actually improved Van Boeing's position because... Well, now, now they're going to get rid of the two balls by Corey's pocket. And now, now Shane's going to deal from, from this position to improve his position. Maybe just roll on the one ball softly. Yeah, that, that was my first thought, too. But it has to be very softly, though. He can't afford to leave the right, bank he can't, on the he one. He can't go past the 11. No, he can't even go that far. Well, he, he's, he's doing so. Oh, this is his pocket here. I, you know what? I was thinking. Oh, yeah, the, the pocket's backwards. No wonder. No, no, I, no, man, I didn't have the pockets backwards. I just didn't see the shot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. I just didn't see the shot. You know, and, 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 can, can you make the 14? No. Well, what's he looking down there for then? I, don't, <laughs> I think the ten's in the way. I don't know. Maybe it's yeah, not. Maybe you're right. Yeah, I know there's nothing over here for him to, to do. I don't think, but I don't know, you know, it's, uh, well, now he's looking to play the combination. I don't know about that shot. Yeah, but where's he going with the cue ball if he plays the combination? Probably back where he is now. Yeah, okay. I don't know about that shot still. Well, that bought him a, another inning. And Shane can't, can't do anything here except something defensive. Now, how about this shot? How about if he shoots the six into the one softly? Boy, that'll, that'll really... Uh... Yeah, but you know, if he doesn't catch it just the right way and it opens the 213, then Corey could have a shot. That's true, okay? But I just like to see players of his caliber shoot shots like that because it's so beautiful when they actually... It is beautiful, well. but the, thing, the problem with it, Billy, is it's not the right shot. No, it's not. Not in this situation. Especially if you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a problem here for sure. Yeah, he's definitely got a major problem now. Yeah, Corey has no threats on his, on, you know, to his pocket. I guess the only threat he'd have would be the 14, and you need the cue ball where the 10 is. Maybe he's shooting at it here, Billy. If he, if, if he can see it, he's got to shoot for it. Yeah, he could make it. I mean, he's got a nice little kiss there. The three ball now tied up to two and the 13. He's got like a... 
Backward cut on the four. I don't know if he's going to shoot it. Has he got a free it. bank on the 10, Bill, and just draw the cue ball straight back? Well, it's not really a free bank. Well, well, I mean, in that regard, yeah, I guess you could call that. If he banks the 10, I look for him just to stick right there. You know, because if he misses the bank, as long as he hits it with good speed, I don't think... Well, yeah, but Shane then he sells out the, pink, the bank on the pink for, for Shane. Kind of, like maybe the 10 will block it. Oh, he's going to bank the three. This is very aggressive here. Well, that's very aggressive there. Well, yeah, that, that it, it didn't seem like it was, uh, he was going to get, you know, benefit by that if he didn't make the ball. He opened those up on Shane's side. Yeah, he's going he, behind the three with the cue ball. Him, right. And he left him a free pop to win the, win the game. And you know what that means? That's the match just about. And he, you know, it is the match, two nothing. No, one nothing in the score of the, of, of the match. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you know, for all intents and purposes, it, it, with these type of players, it's awfully going to be awfully hard for anybody to come back from two nothing down and win the match. Beat, beat your opponent three games in a row. Not that it can't be done. It's just difficult. I'm going to kick this out. He should stick. Mm -hmm. oh, he, might, he better hope it rolls good. I think it did. I think it did. And he's got to do something with the 10, Bill, because it's the only threat for Corey other than the 3. And if he gets down table, I, I, I maybe do a 2-rail this. Yeah. Hmm. Nothing, nothing looks pretty out there. It's kicking. No one, no one has said whether the one's frozen. He's going over to look at it now. Cosmo is. One ball is not frozen. You heard it's not frozen. This, this will be a good, good shot if he gets there. He, he did. He left in the bank on the four. I do believe he, he had did, the bank yeah. on the four. You know. Now he's close enough to hit this ball to be able to hit it with some speed. Stun the cue ball forward to the to the opposite long rail and get well, behind the three. No, I think he can go two cushion around, play shape for the for the ball on his right, the thirteen. Oh, I see. So he Just can, with a high right. Yeah, he or, or, or one rail, whether whatever he chooses. He could have hit that with no English. I think he put a little bit of right spin on that ball, which favored the cue ball going over to that side of the table. Play the 13 softly here. Cue ball about where it is now. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Okay, it listened. This is going to be a nice shot here if he's able to come back. No, he's going to play for the three. See, a lot of players are going to try to go cross table twice, twice there, but that side pocket plays so large, and that would certainly be a momentum stopper there if he would have shot it and scratched. But with his ability and his ball, ball, ball pocketing ability, playing shape for the three was probably the right shot to do. Right thing to do, right shot to take. A two nothing lead. And he had, and I think he's going to get it. Yes, he does. And that's the second game of the match. You know, leads in the match two to nothing. Now leads the match two games. Duel has a pretty, pretty steep hill to climb from here. Yeah, he does. Billy has uh, been our custom here since we started the Make It Happen series last year with the eight ball is to give over the air shout outs to our Make It Happen people. And I'd like to start doing some of that right now if I could. Uh, I'd like to recognize on behalf of AccuStats Video Productions, Joe Anderson, Kevin Adito, uh, Dexter Audain, and he's here, so we're sure glad you made it, Dexter. Scott Baker, Paul Bastable, and he's one of the 
He's got Corey here in the uh, knockout challenge, and of course Paul Glaze is looking pretty good over there. Uh, aren't you doing pretty good over there? Paul's got, uh, got Shane as his horse, and uh, we'll get back to some more of these shout-outs here uh, when his time permits, but Shane breaking up 2 nothing. And you know, I've observed, Billy, most of today, it looks like almost everybody's back-breaking traditionally after all the little experimentation yesterday and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah, and that's what I see as well. It's, it's okay from the offset of the tournament when you're playing on a different table, like now with a 5x10, to experiment on where to break, well, where to break from because uh, no one really knows for certain. The, all these guys are pretty young. They don't go back that far where they were playing more commonly on a 5x10. And in and, and that second, that second to last ball break was quite common back then, by the way. And so they, tr they started off breaking, hitting the second to last ball and also the third ball. And they were getting fairly good results, but uh, for some reason, a couple of the players start breaking them the conventional way, and all of a sudden, everyone started to follow suit then after that. Well, I think the reason for that is once they started trying going back to the conventional way, they had success with the conventional break. It, it, it resulted in a conventional break, which was is okay with everybody right. to get a game started, yeah. rather than the high-risk break that you alluded to with the second or the third ball. Yeah, and, and plus, they, uh, they don't want to feel foolish to either by going to the... Yeah, the unorthodox way of, if you will, exactly. of breaking the balls and, and not doing well. Yeah. And they would feel foolish. And uh, that in itself will cause you to, your speed to drop some. So we can't afford that to happen. Oh, no. I'm playing too good for that. <laughs> He's going to bank this straight back. 100 miles an hour. <laughs> he would have loved He's to feeling put that good. One down. He's feeling good. But when you're up two to nothing, you sure. feel you have total control. Sometimes you, you just want to do something a little extra just to... Well, I think he felt, obviously, if that doesn't uh, jaw, the, jaw up here and go into the stack, uh, you know, Corey's not going to have a shot because uh, the 10 wouldn't come out. But do you think that he hit that maybe a tad bit too hard? A tad. A tad bit too hard. Yeah, oh, but yeah. I, I think that's just uh, maybe also sending a message. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good here, and uh, I'm not afraid of anything. And he, he was uh, wanting to hear that gratifying sound of the ball hitting the pocket with that speed. You know what I mean? That was certainly... Uh, Got, you got the attention of a lot of people out there. And, oh, my goodness. Look at that. Yep. Corey got really nicely here, I think, on the five. I think he can get in between the 11 and the, and the 13 there and go forward. Maybe open something up. I'm not sure if he's got a lot of room to do it. Now, it looks like the 11 ball came, ended up in back of the four ball. And it looks like it's a it's pr uh, pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good shot. It's lined up reasonably well. It could be thrown in for sure. He's got to, he's got to open that up right yeah, now. Yeah, he's got to get rid of that because right uh, if he don't get rid of it now, he may be sorry later. So therefore, now's a good time to get rid of it. And uh, you can probably, uh, yeah, you can, you can get rid of both balls pretty easily here. And that's a Look pretty, this shot. that's a pretty wow. good way to get rid of it, huh? Pretty creative there. Yeah. See that? Yeah, See, those types of shots come so natural for Corey. In other words, he uh, he depicts or notices shots like that much easier and quicker than than mostly all the other players. But he's left uh, Van Boeing some sort of a shot here. It looks like he can hit the 15 and make it, which he did. Yeah, he hit the 13 or 12 ball going up. Had he hit the three, then he would have still been at the table running balls. Now he's looking around to see if he likes anything. Now he's looking, looking at the three off the two here, and it looks like it's pretty close to me. Uh, this is a type of a... The, stri of a, the stripe off the two? Yeah, the, the 13, or, is that the, or the 12? Yeah, that's the 12. Off the two. And draw the cue ball back? And he's looking at it. You know, if, the, if he draws it back, he's going to force it through the two a little bit more. If it's, a, if it's like actually it's laying for him to draw it, then he'll yeah, draw it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's also the, the, the way you've got to play the shot, withdraw it to... Not sell anything out, you know. And if the two was frozen to the one, I don't know. If, I don't know if you'll get that kind of action because of the of the two being frozen. Right, because the two won't move. Right, so you can't well, go through it. Right. It's much more of a glance. So he's going to kick the eleven in, or attempt to. Now this is risky here if he don't hit this really good. You're right. See, that was risky there, because I don't think it was a good time for that shot. Because I just don't. I mean, I th I would have I would have been happy just to get rid of that ball.
Now, Corey can play position for the bank on the 11, which wouldn't be a bad idea considering how the balls are positioned. You know, he can follow the 14, but, you know, big deal. But if he plays position for the bank on the 11 you can with the angle, now get he can to play the 14 position with the an fourth. angle. Right. right. You know, I like, I like him. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, he's going to have the 14, Billy. It's going to be a thin cut, but um, I think I like the way the cue ball is going to go off the second long cushion. Now and probably at the six. Going to have to go three cushions across table. One, two, three, and he's got to get across table now not because the there. speed of that shot was the, actually the crucial part of that shot, you know, making sure you hit it with the right speed because if you don't hit it with the right speed, you end up in back of that wall of balls there with the 11 ball near the pocket. Now you may have to kick cross table with the 11 two cushions. I wonder if he can bank that 13 and follow the cue ball to the short rail, Bill. It looks like it's a little awkward. I don't think he can yeah, follow he's, through the he's, ball he's, and get that spin. Right. I it's think not have, straight in on it. No, I yeah. think after contact, have to he's going to go a little bit to the left, and he needs to go straight or to the right a little bit. I don't think either of those, things, or either of those two things are going to happen. I think he's got to go two cushions into the 11 like this. Wouldn't even be bad to take a foul here if he doesn't hit the 11. No, well, he's in good shape. That's a good shot. Nicely done. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. So it was so it was absolutely essential for him and very important for him when the, in the preceding shot when he cut the 14 and to hit it with the right speed. That's what have brought that would have brought home the money on that shot if he would hit it with the right speed, but he didn't. Let's go forward here. Looks like Van Bowling looks like he's got a combination bank on the 12 ball. Now, the cue ball may run into the seven ball, and if he misses this bank, he may leave a return bank on the 11 or possibly even the 12, but he kind of likes it with the way it's laying. He may even have the 11 ball to aid the bank, possibly. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. I mean, it's a ball and a half out, as you can see. The 11 ball but might he, I think he actually it. played it off of that to maybe tie up a bank. Okay, now, he may have a bank on the on the 11 here. It's, I don't know for certain if he does. The 13, or is that the 13 ball on the, on the rail here? It's the, uh, yeah, I think so. 12 or the 13, but the one next to the 11 there, it's really a question of can he can he miss the scratch and uh, still and still get behind I the 13? I think he can. I, no, I think he can miss the 13. I think he can go up table. If he makes it, I think he can get some balls here. See? Now he can go up table. I think if he makes it, he gets some balls here. And that's what he's done. He made a real good shot. An excellent shot. So he's set definitely back in the game here, that's for sure. Well, that's, that's his second him, uh, ball. That's his second ball. Um, excuse me, that's his uh, fifth ball. Fifth ball. He need, he's playing for three. Come on, you got to go back here with the cue ball. Well, you got a little lazy with that shot, you know. A little apprehensive with the stroke. Ah, he's going to have to bank the 12 here. And he's going to leave Van Boeing a shot on that ball in front of his pocket. And since he's right-handed, that shot's going to play much more simple because of he's right-handed, if he happens to miss this bank. Now, if he misses this bank, which he did, Van Boeing's going to cut this ball in because he's right-handed. It may look like a very steep cut, but, you know, considering the score, you have to go for it. And you really have to go for it when you, when you pocket balls as well as this guy. You got to hit it hard enough to get it there. Mm -hmm. A little too much to ask for, but, you know, I'm not mad at him for trying because that's a shot that he had to go sure. for. And he played it with no English, too, Billy, which uh, I'm not, not surprised that he played it that way because of the, w the direction the cue ball would have gone. Well, another reason why he might, may have played it with no English is because sometimes it's easier to, to sight see, the to ball. See the, see the, see the to see the cut point. The edge of the right, ball, right. Because right. you're not having to allow for anything. Right. Corey was questioning whether Shane got a rail and, uh, after he missed the ball together, and he did. He ran into the eight ball, and the eight ball got a cushion, so no foul. Anyway, Corey uh, now needs one ball to win the, win the game. Now, the nine ball is a ball that won't skid as easily as the seven ball. Maybe that's why he likes the nine. He can stroke it better. And he can go behind the 13 with the cue ball just in case. <laughs> Hit it a little roughly, but in spite of that, it went in. That was game number three. All of a sudden, Corey Duell now is on the board with the game. 
trailing in the match. One game to two, race to three. Starting to get a little more exciting now, Kenny. It sure is, Billy. And let me uh, get back really quick, if I can, to uh, mentioning a few more shout-outs here because we just don't know how many more in-between games we're going to have. So I'd like to pick this up and uh, recognize Robert Bettin, Manny Berrios, and you're here, Manny, and we're so glad that you're able to join us. George Berry, Carissa Biggs. Carissa, thank you very much for all your support. Kevin Brown, George Brew, Dean Campbell, Corey Caps, Dave Carr, Jim Cassidy, and Richard Clark. Uh, from all of us here at AccuStats Video Productions, we very much appreciate you helping make this happen. You know, Billy, I want to just get back to one thing in that game. Remember when Shane banked the one ball and he hit it with a real aggressive stroke and we talked about that and all of that and the one rattled the pocket, came out, knocked the 10 out. That led to the result of that game. So in retrospect, do you now think Shane should have played that ball a little less speed? Well, I know before he shot that shot as well as he did that he didn't need that shot, okay? And the only reason probably he played that shot, the way that he did play the shot, was because he was totally comfortable with the 2 nothing lead. He thought that he was just going to breeze in. But sometimes your ego gets the best of you at times, and you do something that maybe you're not supposed to do. And what happens? Uh-oh, what happened now? All of a sudden. So, so uh, you know what? It's good because now we have a better match. And if Corey can win on his break, we're going to see a final ma final game for the match. And, then, and there's a lot of players hoping that Corey wins, by the way. That's right, there are. There's five of them. Yeah. And one, and one spectator. No, one spectator. <laughs> oh, over there doesn't hope. <laughs> Not, there's one <laughs> For one, sure. Yeah. Once again, a, uh, a traditional break by Corey. Uh, you know, not, not, nothing on Shane's side. And uh, two or three threats over there on Corey's uh, side of the table. Nicely, nicely struck ball. Nice speed with the nine beautiful, ball. Beautiful. Good position. Reasonably good position with the, two, with the cue ball. Always walking around the table first to see if there's any triple kisses available that he may know. Because he knows a lot of them. You know that, right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, maybe combination carom kiss again. Uh, uh, I don't think he sees any of those. Well, there's two. You know, the, the first thing would come to mind here would be to take a foul. That's not good. You're on the first one. The second thing is kick along at the nine and try to get the cue ball between nine and the cushion. You're jacked up over the stack. If he can mass say inside of this, that's probably the shot. As long as he doesn't sell out the bank. A soft draw will send the cue ball toward, yeah, a soft draw like that will send the cue ball toward that end of the table. Mm -hmm. You know, now man Boeing has a shot on the 15. It's not a type of a shot that he wants to shoot, but it's certainly a familiar shot for him. He likes the shot, but he knows he doesn't like the results he's going to have what, to get with the shot. What can he have next, Billy, from this position? That's he what I'm can't talking get, about. Right, he, he can't get a second ball easily. He likes the shot, so what he's going to do here most likely is... Try to float up. Can he miss the seven with the cue ball and get near the one to maybe shoot the other stripe? Oh. Well, that's really cold for that cue ball to take that angle right into the side pocket. Well, it was an expected angle to take. I mean, I mean, he's looking right at it. He knows it's going toward that pocket. Well, I think what he was trying to do was just obviously just go by the pocket, miss it, and have the cue ball then hit the inside of the one and slide down. Oh, yeah, if he hits the rail that's before what he was, the right, one and, and slides down. That's now, what he was trying to do, now I'm he, sure. Now he's in business, right. you know, and considering how, the, how well the balls were broken and how they've turned out, maybe that wasn't too bad of a shot to take or too bad of a gamble to take. Right, because if he doesn't time. scratch, even if he misses the ball and slides down, he can still get, get Corey in a bad position. Corey now with a great, great opportunity here to yeah. even this matchup and force a case game. I mean, there's, it looks like uh, certainly a couple here. What do you, yeah, I, I like that combination uh, in a couple of shots. Maybe even the next shot, leaving the three there for a little insurance after the combination. I agree. Play for the combination now. Right. He, I agree. He didn't get out far Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. I agree. He didn't get out quite far enough, Billy. He's going to be okay to play it, but uh, the cue ball's now going in the stack. Uh, I don't know if he can come forward around it. Uh, maybe you can tell from where you're sitting. Well, 
I can, think can, can you come forward with some uh, top left and just come two rails around? I don't around know what stack? he can do. Matter of fact, he's not really quite comfortable with what is, may happen. Well, you can always shoot the three to get back on the combination and a better angle, but then when you shoot the combination, it might get might be tough to get another one. He's going to maybe draw, maybe draw hit into the nine. nine. Yeah, can, you, can, can you get in there? Oh, yeah, softly you like this. Oh, may playing for the combination again. Well, you know, if he drew into the nine and he wasn't real soft on it, he could have sent the nine into the stack and he would have lost the opportunity to pocket that ball. I don't know how that combination, the nine, lays with that uh, I think the nine's it. coming forward to the, to the diamond. Right. He's not playing the nine, that's correct. I mean, oh, that's, it might fall, it might fall, it might fall, it yep. might fall. I saw it moving, it was moving. Yep. Even with my bad eyes, I saw it moving. And I, mean, I don't know who a few people out there saw it moving, but I saw that ball, it wasn't still, it was still moving just a little bit, and enough to fall. Now he, uh, he has a nice shot on the two to draw back for the combination, or maybe even the 11 ball, if that'll pass. I think the 11 does pass. So a little bit of low left here. Hit the chalk right to the right of his hand and spin out. Oh, he didn't even need to do that. Okay, real quick, Let's coming up, folks. It. Let's watch the 15 ball here. Just sit there for about uh, three seconds before it decides to go. And hits two points, two no, draws. It'll stop, but it's, it's still moving. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it looks like he's going to run out here. This Three, is, five, is seven, he nine. Needs, yeah. He's, got, he needs he's got six balls. That means he's playing for two. And you know what's going to happen then, don't you? Case game. We're going to see a one game to see who wins this match. And it'll be the most pressure-packed game of the tournament so far. Let's just spin that and go in the 14, yeah. Well, he didn't really brush the 13. He would have liked to brush Just the 13. Just raise it, right. He tried to brush right, the 13. Exactly. To help the cue ball get out. He's close enough to the 13 to hit it accurately, but the cross side possibility of a it's scratch little is bit there. A little bit of outside here. There. I think he'll go it's long. there. Yeah. No, you're right. A little bit of English sends him away from that side pocket. After game number four, this match is tied up two games apiece. Well, as you said earlier, um, there's certainly five people that are, uh, well, four, plus Corey, that have uh, a vested interest in what happens right here. This is some pretty good stuff we're watching right here. We saw Van Boeing playing brilliantly, getting ahead two to nothing, but all of a sudden played that, mm, mm -hmm. maybe that really curious shot with that bank on the one ball that sort of like opened that door a little bit for Duel. And that's all that he needed that door to open up was that little bit because he certainly has taken advantage of it. And now after game four, it's tied up at two apiece. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a pretty good match going here. Well, should Corey come through here and win, he'll be two and one. Shane will be two and one. Shannon Dalton is one and one. He's playing uh, at nine. And um, Alex is one and one. He's done for the day. Efren's one and one. He's done for the day. And Scott's one, zero oh and two. And he's playing at nine. There could be four guys at two and one at the end of the day. In the meantime, this match is not over. We're already giving it to Corey in a sense. No, in well, a no sense. it was a hypothetical. Okay. It was hypothetical. But uh, you know what? Van Boeing has showed me that he's pretty hard to beat. And I'm sure he's, he's been tied up too, too many times and came out the victor. So therefore, to beat him, you're going to have to really play some good pool. Corey right now is playing some good pool. Can he keep it up? And in order to win the match, Corey will have had to have beaten Shane twice on Shane's break out of the last three racks. Now he's beat him once on his break, and he just held serve. And, another, yeah, and like you said, if Corey wins this game, he'll also be tied for the lead. With a lot of and momentum. don't you think he don't know that? With a lot of momentum, given the way he would have come back to win the match from 2 nothing down. You banking this, Billy? Can he get the 11 out of the way? He's going to risk it. Oh, he needed that kiss. He needed the kiss. He needed that kiss. Yes, he did. Because had he not got that kiss, that cue ball was going fast enough to make it into that pocket and drop. So he was pretty, pretty fortunate to have brushed that four ball to slow up the cue ball. He's left uh, Van Boeing some sort of a combination bank, but it's a risky one because he may not be able to control the 10 ball with this shot. Well, he made sure that he controlled the 10 ball, one, but he didn't control the cue he ball. He wanted the cue ball up against the stack, or at least a little further where Corey can't destroy the 3-11-4 uh, here, or at least do something with, uh, with, the two, with two of the balls. 
But the balls clearly favor Van Boning they in this do. match here. And excuse me, in this last case game. And and even this shot here is not going to change it much. He's going to have to work hard and long to get away from this position. That's a good shot. That's a good reel. That's a good yeah, shot. He got a reel. Pink got a reel. Man, Boeing, uh, he has to uh, put him back in the stack. I like coming off the 11. A little inside angle. He's got to hit this ball very thinly to get back into the stack because he's uh, really not going into the 11 ideally to put him back in the stack. He's the inside he angle. Yeah, he has to check the cue ball. He needs good speed. That's good speed. That's very good speed. Can Corey go off the eight, Billy, and get up here underneath these three on the, uh, on the no, short rail? No, I don't rail? think he has anything with the eight. No? Okay. No. What about the 14? Now, what I'm saying is uh, raise the 14, go through the gap between the 8 and the, and the 13, maybe spin well, against the spin uh, against yeah, the 5. I, I, but I wouldn't fool with the 8. I'd rather fool with the 15 and drop on that side rail than fool with the 8. If you fool with the 8, you open up everything because, see, the 8 blocks, right, it the, blocks 13. the 13. You know, the eight's a bad ball for, for, for Van Boeing. Right. Just leave it there. You need to hit that one a little harder, Corey. I think he really felt that if he had to take the foul, it was worth the position to do so, Billy. Oh, absolutely. So uh, I don't think, and, and he couldn't risk going near the, near the corner pocket with the But the problem the is, is that he, he, he's going to be there again. Virtually right. the same position right. that, that right. he shot from. And that happens know? so much in one pocket. You see repetitive positions for three, four, five innings sometimes in a row. Guy does one thing, the return is done, and then he does it again because the balls don't move very far. But you know what? An inch different one way or the other may make a difference in what decision or what option could be available. So therefore, Excellent you, point. Have to, you have to do that. Even though you may figure you might be in the same position, right. you, you have to have look to again. You, you have, have to, to look be. again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, but, but you do know one thing for certain is you don't like the position you're in. So therefore, do something to try to change it around a little bit. You know, change it around. Well, he can possibly two rail to fifteen here. If that's I was, I would, I'm just, I don't know what he's looking at here. I, I was going to say, could he, could he drag it off the one ball? I don't even know if he could see the one. Well, he might pet back this and go under the four here. Well, wow, he oh, got look a look at this. He got look a at very, this kiss. Look very, at this kiss. Very fortuitous kiss there. Had that ball, ball fallen, we would have had a, we would have had a, a winner. Look at all the balls, yeah. how they opened up so nicely for him. I think he's got to just give him this. I mean, uh, it's going to come up anyway because he owes one. Wow. Great shot. You're talking about a, a top shelf shot. That was a great shot. Really hard to judge that speed rail first. That was a great shot. That certainly ensured his position here. You know, had he just stopped there, then, then Corey could have done one of several things to, like, break down this position. But now he's going to struggle to just to get, a, get away from it. What a shot. I mean, that little shot right there was a big shot. Can he hit the eight ball, Billy, do you think? No. Is he hooked? Okay, he can't hit, can't no, hit the eight. I thought he no. might get hit the eight no. and just come here. He's got a problem right here. Right. He's really got a problem here. He, and he really doesn't like it. You know what he can do, though? He, he can go down table with the cue ball. Can he, can he hit the eight? Looks if he like can he's hit the eight, the eight. I, I would go to the one ball with the cue ball. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it'll, it'll buy a little time if he can. Let's, let, I'm going to use the telestrator here, if you will. That's, that's okay. Thank you. See this ball here? By going toward the one, he leaves this, the option. This, this, this ball is an option ball. And that's a really a very big ball for Van Boning because he can do a lot of damage with that ball. That could be a game-winning shot coming up here. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, but even at the risk of, of, of leaving that bank, Billy, I think the, the shot he played was the, the right shot given the options that he had. Yeah, he was exactly. in a tough spot. It, it was some sort of salvation. Right. 
He's banking the 14 here. No, it is the 15. And it, and it tied up. Yeah. It tied up, and he walks away from the table shaking his head saying, why does that happen to me? But it doesn't always happen to me, though, does it? No. So, hey, that's an easier way to deal with it. Yeah, but why this time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> why now? Yeah. I didn't mind it two games ago, yeah. you know, when I banked the one, but yeah, not right. now. <laughs> <laughs> Coy's, looking, <laughs> Coy's looking at the two real on the eighth. I mean, that's a shot that he shouldn't even know is on the table. Oh, he's going to bank the one into the stack, Billy. Maybe he's not putting it in the stack, but I, I kind of like that. The only problem with this shot, if he doesn't get the one across the table, he's going to leave a free bank on the eight. Oh, which speed was good. Very nicely executed shot. Speed was real good there. Yep. Now let's take a look at this shot he has here. I have a shot here that... that is a good shot okay this is a really a crazy shot but i'm going to draw it up for you here on the telestrator give me some give me an overhead the shot i like is to go one rail two rails off this rail and then cue ball back to the stack here notice when you see when you when he leaves the table you'll see that angle that he had for that shot that's no good see the angle that he had for that shot, see, the one ball wasn't there. He yeah. went around the 10 yeah. Yeah. And, and went long because he was way down here. Right. Went long. All he needed was good speed, and it, it sends you right big, toward the big, stack. Big area big to come to. Big right. target. Yeah, he had a big, big area. Big target. And, I, and considering the results he got with the shot he chose, that shot now looks pretty damn good. But I think that... Uh, Corey's going to have a big, 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 big advantage in this game right now. Would you, would you, would you get get uh, risky here and try to get on the eleven next, or just go ahead for the thirteen and then try to get your angle to draw into the four Here's and the then problem. have the eleven? Here's the problem with the shot that he's looking at. If he hits it with a natural ball, he's going toward the four. The wrong side. He may get a double kiss off the fifteen and scratch. Like so he's, he's going to draw he's drawing, it here. drawing it into the cushion. He's staying, yeah. He's drawing away from that from that possible scratch. Right. He says, "I'll just take what the table gives me right. instead of gambling for more. I'll just take what the table's given me." Now, right now, he can draw into the four. Okay, he can draw into the four and open up the four for a possible for a, for a bank. bank after he yeah, shoots the eleven. That's what exactly. he's going to do here. Right. Needs a little speed here. Up. Oh, he didn't. Well, maybe he didn't like the angle because you see he went into the eleven. He'll make this and he'll shoot the four into the 15 and both balls will leave that area and he'll have a nice lead in the game, you know, and he can, then he'll have the ability to manage a win. So he'll be able to manage his way to a win here. He won't have to like, I, I, play good I, I, I think he, he was looking at something up table, but I, I agree with you. You got to take both these out now, but he was looking at no. banking the 14 ball. No. And if he doesn't make, if he makes it, then he'll take these two out. But, uh, you're right there. It's the perfect opportunity to hey, get rid I of them like and put them on your side. Out. Those balls are really bad where they are. I like taking them out. Oh. I like taking those balls out. I think he should have taken those balls out. I agree. Because he's asking for trouble by leaving those balls there. He was in perfect line to get rid of both of those balls, and they would have both went on his side. That's right. Okay. That's, well, exactly. Now he's going to lay on the ball. He's going to put him in back of the four, and we're going to see what's going to happen now. Okay? Now he doesn't like it. You see? Now, how, how's he like it now? Exactly. That's exactly how I felt about it, as you did, that they should have been taken out when he was right there and had the... There was no advantage. If he made the 14, the next shot was going to be taking him out. Now, he's got a problem here. Really deep, a, a, a big problem. Big problem. Okay, now he has a shot here, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it is. Let me have an overhead, please. He has this shot here. He can aim this way. The fourth ball will hit this rail, then into the ball. This ball will leave. The cue ball will go up table, and he'll be able to take, he possibly take both balls out. He's kicking here, but he's going to leave the, the bank on the 14. He's going to miss it all together. May get it he's going to miss back. it all together. Now, this is what I was talking about. If you take those balls out, this can't happen. You have a 4 nothing lead. You have control of the table. You have two more balls on your side. And you have the other guy stress it out somewhat. You know. Well, well, uh, yeah, where's my 2 nothing lead gone? You know, now all of a sudden, right. he's back in the game. 
15. Bank the 14 next. No, he doesn't have to. That was that was nice. Now, and, and that was a really, really good shot because because if he opened up the balls to where he can run out, then he got the bank on the 14 next if he, if he exactly. needs it. Exactly. And he didn't have to finesse that ball because he could hit it with a good stroke going into the stack like that. Now, this shot, if he, if he plays for the bank, has to be hit very softly, very softly. He's got that type of an angle where it's kind of like marginal whether he can get back or not. And if he can get back, it's going to take a good stroke. And with a good stroke, he's going to go bypass it. He's going to bypass his position. So therefore, this shot has to be hit extremely well in terms of the speed of the cue ball. I wonder if he was going to play for the bank. For the bank. Yeah, absolutely. He's playing for the bank. Right, that because, was the, the best shot. Because I think the seven goes, Billy. Right in right. his hole. But he didn't play for the seven because of the angle he No, had. no, I mean, he next. Right. That's why he played for the 14 bank, because he can shoot the seven next and open up the 3-9. Uh, now, this here bank, it doesn't play that natural either. No, he's got to hold it up just a little bit. Got to kill it. Got to hold up the cue ball a little bit. See, he went too far with the cue ball. He wanted to cinch the shot. Yeah, but he didn't end up with the right angle on the yeah, bank. He's, he's looking at the six from uh, where I'm sitting. It looks like he might have... Wow. At best, a half of the pocket to the long rail. Very but, dangerous shot to well, shoot. Well, sure, because look, you know, you can't baby it because of what you'd leave. And if you hit it firm and it catches the point, it can go right into those three and move them all right to Corey's, right to Corey's side. I don't think he's playing it. He is playing it. He's going to hit the point. But Co Corey's cutting this, too. You can bet all the money in your pocket, and even in my pocket, always cutting this two in. There's no question. Well, he's got to spot a ball first. Let's see. Let's just see. He's cutting, he's okay. cutting at this ball right here. You can bet on that because he sees the finish line with this shot, and he's going for it. It would be the match either way right here. He may not like where the three is going to go. Yeah. He may feel that the cue ball is going to hit the three, then hit the Might seven. Hit the three on hit. top. Well, no, it's going to hit the three on the side. Here's the way I here's the way I see the shot. Can overhead, please. Going to the hit, way I see the shot, the he's three going to about cut nine o'clock. It's going to hit the three over there, the th and the cue ball is going to hit the three, and then the nine, and come over this way. And he may not end up with a shot, and could possibly even scratch. No, I don't think he's going to scratch. Oh, he did. He did. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. He don't like the results now. You know, but he had a gamble there. I think he had a gamble because he's such a good shot maker. It was a really you know, nice shot and that he made, and he, he didn't get a reward for a nice shot. But I think he knew he might not. He's going to have to really work his way out of this one. He can't kick the short rail into the nine because he'll, he'll leave a bank on the six or the three. Once again, an overhead, please. Once again, I think the angle that he's left here with the six, I think he can hit the six into the rail, into the nine, and draw the cue ball this way, okay? I believe he can make the six off the nine, and the nine will end up going back on his side. I think he has that shot. He can shoot the six into the bottom rail and then into the nine. The nine will leave, and the cue ball he can draw up table. That way he'll leave distance, if something funny should happen down there, at least he'll leave distance. Yeah, That's what but I'm you know, I see the shot, and um, I don't disagree with it. Except you're just putting a lot of stuff in motion here, and it won't take much for something to go bad for you to lose. Okay, it, as long as you play the cue ball, okay, put emphasis on controlling the cue ball on this shot. You know that the most important part of the shot is the cue ball in the shot. You'll do well with that. And whatever happens with the nine, it happens, okay? Or the six. But you know you're going to get some positive action. I think if he tries to play passively and just roll softly, he's going to end up in trouble. Unless he's trying to bank it like this. Uh, he wants to hit that. He wants to hit it. Is he going to get away with it? No, he sold the six out. Okay, now he sold out a, a shot on the six, but you know what? It's a fair trade-off because even though he has a shot on the six, the gonna likeliness be, gonna be of be tough him, to get another one. Absolutely. Right. The likeliness of him coming up with a second shot isn't right. that good. The 110 or big, or he'd go up and down and back towards the nine ball. Uh -huh. 
in the nine. Now I don't know. I don't think he can spin into the four. Right, he has to miss the one coming out. You know, exactly. He didn't. He didn't want to miss it. He wanted to hit it so where he would have got the shot with it. And well, it. he oh hit it on the nose. Yeah. yeah okay. He, maybe he would have pushed some balls toward his pocket and ended up with the shot. You know, but like I said, the likeliness of him coming up with the next shot wasn't very good, meaning that Corey did make a good shot. Yeah, if Corey only loses one ball from there, he did well. Now, it's 4-4, four to four, and we can't ask for anything better than this. I think it's 5-3, uh, uh, Billy. It's 5-3? to three? Yeah, according to uh, our score. Uh, there's a, there's, a, yeah, ball, right, there's right. a hidden ball in Corey's tray you can't see. Now, this is dangerous, too. He's going to have to hit this good. This is dangerous. Oh, I, I don't like that shot. I did not like that shot. All right, the ball count is 5-3 to three in favor of Corey. The match is tied 2-2. Two to two. Shane has yet to lose in the tournament. Corey's one win, one loss. There's an awful lot at stake here for the future of uh, each guy. Now, he would like to bank this 10. But he wants to make sure, or is, or is he, is he going to bank the 3 and maybe try to get behind the 8? I don't think he can bank the 3. And get behind and get the eight. Behind the yeah. eight. yeah. Well, he would like to bank the 10. Yeah, but, but, where's he, where's he go, but where's he going to hit the one ball if he banks the 10? I think he'll hit it to the, on the right. I think he'll, be, he'll do good if he hits it on the right. But I think He'll the, have to, because if I he hits like it on the left, he can sell the three out. Okay. He played mostly cue ball there, I think, Bill. And he got good a, he's got good action. The 10 blocked the 9. The three's blocking the 9. The cue ball's... The 9 is somewhat frozen down here. Uh, it's going to be a tough kick. It's a tough kick. A lot of bad things can happen for Van Boning in this in this situation here. He can leave a bank on the ten. He can get a double kiss on the on the on the kick. He can leave a bank on the four. He can get a double kiss and the Cubo can go awry on him if, and take off. A lot of bad. Cosmo things. is uh, excuse me, Billy. He's rechecking. Shane asked him to recheck whether that was frozen or not because if it's not frozen, Shane is going to soft kick at it. I think you may have to check it. Since, if they since want me to, I, I will. If the players agree, we'll let the players be the deciders. If they want me, I'm going to need my goggles. Corey says it's frozen. Looks like we're going to have to have... Oh, I'm not going to go out there unless... Uh, unless uh, Why don't we call Danny? <laughs> I'll go out there if, uh, if they still have a debate. But Co Danny Co can Cos tell if it's frozen from up there. Yeah, well, you know, I'm... Cos Okay, I'm going to go. The man has spoken. It is not frozen. That's what I was talking about. He can get a double kiss on that shot. He, there was a lot of things that could have gone wrong with that kick. You know, he got a double kiss on that shot. Just like I said, you know, there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong with that kick. And now Duel's at the table needing three balls, and he's looking at one of them with the nine. I think he played the right shot, Shane, though. I think, I think he played his only shot, but he didn't spin it enough. So he caught it thin. Yeah, he caught it too thinly on, on the coming way out. out. Coming out, yeah. And, and he got that double kiss. Had he hit a fuller, he wouldn't have gotten that double kiss to send the cue ball up. Like, like I said, there, were, there was a possibility that may have happened. Now, he's kind of come across and hit the seven here. And he didn't do it. Yeah, he but he's going to have a bank on the three for the... For the uh, for the, for the match? No, he's not. He came just a touch too far. Well, you know, this is pretty... He may play the combination here, by the way. Yeah, but that... Um, yeah, he may play the combination because he likes to play shots to win. 
and he's so adept at playing combinations like this. Yeah, Even though it's off angle, listen, where's, where's the cue ball going? He's not worried about the cue yeah, ball. But he's if he worried about winning okay. the match here. Okay, then if he plays all shot and not, no cue ball here. He's worried about winning the match here. <laughs> You know, he knows, he, left. he knows he was going to leave something. He was worried about winning the match. He felt that he could win the match on that shot. And you know what? I can't uh, yeah, fault him no, for no, shooting that no, shot. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. I just thought maybe he would just take a walk around the table one more time and just see if there was anything the better. The mindset, he, well, there wasn't anything better. Other, you know, if okay. gonna, uh, the, the reason I'm saying this is because the Your mindset and the mindset that he had, and I, and I totally agree with it, is he wasn't thinking not to lose the match. He was thinking to win the match. Yeah. So, therefore, that shot How do was I a win good from shot. Here? Yeah. Okay. Well, Shane overcooked that ball, and uh, now he's going to have to take the four out. We're going to have a defensive battle here for a couple of innings, I think. And, and he also had the added insurance of the one and the A tied up at the other end of the table, and nobody only needing one ball. So he knows right. he's going to get back to the table. Out, right. You know? So he was playing with house money, if you will. So understanding that, that shot, and that shot wasn't all that difficult either. He, he probably was even money to make it, I would think, yeah. you know, or at least hang it. Well, he hit it with the, the correct speed. He did lag it. Now, look, does, he have, does he have kind of a free bank here, or is, uh, is the that, side that in the side way? That pocket yeah. looks like it's pretty big. I don't think I'd fool with this. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's content to push him up table, Billy. Right. He's on the hill. He wants to play one ball at a time right. here. He wants, to play, he wants to create congestion, and then he wants to break one ball out and have him, you know, have, have him volley back and forth to see who's, who, who pockets that one ball. He wants to play one ball at a time here. And, and from what I've seen in Shane's game, he's willing to play that kind of a game, which I think is a, is a, is a leak or a weak point of his game. Well, against this opponent, for sure. But there's no question, this is the most exciting game of the tournament so far. Corey with a comeback from 2 nothing down on the hill here in the case game. Shane undefeated. Corey threatening to log jam us up at 2-1 to one here. A lot going on. Who would have thought 45 minutes ago this match would have came down 45 to 45 minutes ago, my friend, you had Shane in the finals against Alex <laughs> <laughs> at four to, with four and one records. Yeah. Now, you still may get there, what are you gonna but do? I yeah. think maybe the odds have changed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time for a shot. We're going to see a two-railer on the one here. Let me see. Shane put him over there. Let's see if he made a wage. See, I don't like what Shane did because now see, he's going to play for that one ball now. See, now that one ball's yeah, out. Yeah, but he's going to sell out a bank here. You know, he's going to sell out something, but he doesn't have to make it. And if he doesn't make it, he's going to give up some sort of a shot, too. This is what Corey wants to do. He wants to go ahead and challenge him to shoot one ball for one ball. Right. And that's not a bad co a strategy well, here. I think you just got to lag this cross corner and go at the, at the, the colors with the cue ball. See... You can do these kind of things that Corey is doing because the other balls are relatively out of play. So you can't get burned. You see, this is what I'm talking about. Play one ball for one ball. This guy's not going to make a mistake, which he, he just did. He just did. And now it's okay. You, you won the game. He won the game because he shot what most people or what many may have thought was the wrong shot. But it really wasn't. It's going to the rail. It's going to the rail. It's all yeah. in. I tell you, that was uh, pretty good. That was some pretty good stuff. Well, uh, not only did Corey beat Shane and uh, give him his first loss, he just ripped $1,000 out of poor Joe Glaze's pocket over there. So, uh, Joe, the good news is you don't have to give him any jelly. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd like to congratulate uh, Paul Bastable, who has just won $1,000 courtesy of Mr. Fleming in the Akistats Knockout Challenge. So congratulations, Paul, and once again, thanks for helping make all this happen. Billy, a pleasure, pleasure. as always. And uh, stay tuned, everybody. Uh, our post time is 9.30 p.m. for our final match of the night, which will be Shannon the Cannon and Scott the Freezer Frost. So this is Ken for Billy and Cardona, and uh, we'll see you guys in about an hour.